Now before we review the speakers in question, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons and then it just tells YouTube that this video is relevant and it helps the channel to grow and all that jazz. Anyway, over to the review. Now what we're talking about here today is a pair of stand mounted speakers and they're fairly large for stand mounted speakers as you'll see in a moment. They come from Sofia in Bulgaria. They're called the Headone Mark 1s from a company called Ecobox. Now these speakers are intriguing for two reasons. Firstly, they are specialist speakers, specialists in their field. And I'll get to that a bit later on in the sound tests. And the second reason, well, if you look at these speakers as currently commercial, available for sale right now, in that category, they are quite possibly the rarest speakers in the world. Why? Well, I have the only pair. Not even the company has a pair like this that is finished, ready to go, ready for sale. There are a few, obviously, back in the factory, but they're still in a state of being built. None of them have a finish yet and so on. The pair I have and the pair you're about to see are right now one of a kind. Now there'll be plenty available for sale very, very soon indeed, but right now they are unique. So on that note of breaking news, let's take a closer look at these rather rare speakers. And welcome to the close-up of the Ecobox Headone Mark I speakers. And before we get to the speakers, I just want a quick word about the company name, which is a very strange name, Ecobox. It sounds like a packaging company, but it isn't really. The idea of Ecobox as a company is all about the environment and looking after the same. So as you can see, we have quite a large stand-mounted speaker. Headone itself, the actual name, it's one of those classical Greek references, a goddess of pleasure, so I hear. And as you can also see, there is just one drive unit. This is a full range drive unit. Now let's take a look at the finish. The company tends to make its speakers on demand and it does offer a natural veneer in any type of gloss or matte finish. Now, as I say, these speakers are stand mounted, but you could put them on the floor in the right situation. But I think stand mounted is where they're generally going to be seen. And I've put these speakers on a pair of my own stands. In this case, I'm using a pair from Hi-Fi Racks. The company does not at the moment sell a specialist pair of stands for these speakers. And I did ask them about this and they replied, we are able to offer some options if requested and match them with the speaker's color. When I pushed them a bit further, they said, if requested, we are able to design and manufacture wooden or metal stands to respond to customers' demands. So if you're looking to buy a pair of these speakers and you want to buy a pair of specialist stands to match, the company will do that for you. You just have to ask. Now, apart from the driver, there is a front loading port down here, which gives the speaker a sort of upside down post box look. I think you'll agree. Now, the great thing about having a front mounted port is that it helps in room positioning because you can have this speaker pretty close to a rear wall. The reason it's there at all is to enhance bass. Now, as you can see, it's a fairly large speaker. So in terms of upper mid and treble, well, we'll get to the sound tests and we'll find out about that later on. But when it comes down to bass, this should, at least with visual evidence, offer pretty decent bass, but we'll see. And if you look at the side and let me move the speaker to the side, you can just see how deep this cabinet goes. Now, as you can see, the cabinet itself is pretty deep. So you would think bass performance should, as you can see here, it should be pretty good. Let's look at the rear. Now, because there's a bass port at the front, there's nothing at the back, but we do have some termination points here. So let's take a closer look at this. Now, as you can see, the speaker can take a pair of speaker cables and they can be spayed as well as banana types. And you can just make out, I hope you can just see the sensitivity there, which is pretty impressive. And as I said on the introduction, this is the only finished pair of Headone Mark 1s currently available in the world. So there's no serial number there just yet. 
But rest assured, if you're looking to buy a pair of these speakers, the company EcoBox is taking orders right now. A fairly simple configuration. Didn't take too long to look around this particular cabinet. But of course, how do they sound? Well, let's look at the sound tests and find out. And welcome back to the sound tests. And let's address that point I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that the Hedon Mark 1s are specialists in their field. I'm looking for these speakers to respond with a little bit of accuracy and precision here, because Leo Kotke's regards from Chuck Pink is the essence of precision and accuracy with his fascinating guitar style. So how did these speakers fare? Kotke's guitar is complex in string terms with a many layered presentation. That affords the possibility of muddy and blurry mid-range and treble to appear. Any speakers need to be on the ball and pretty wide awake to properly track this performance. In use, because of the high sensitivity of these speakers, I had to run over to the gain on my preamp and knock that down by several clicks to maintain the same volume as my reference speakers. These speakers will be ideal for use with a lower cost, well in relative terms, valve amplifier. The head-on speakers won't need much oomph to work well at all. Now I must admit that I was in a state of slight trepidation when I was installing the head-ons because much of my past experience with full range speakers has not been particularly trouble free. Many of the designs I've stumbled across have produced a slightly aggressive and edgy performance with bright mids and harsh treble. Not here though, and that was a relief. What I did hear was a very clean soundstage indeed. Scrubbed and shiny with an open and airy background. Here the music was clean and full of transparency. The sense of clarity also reflected on the swift and nimble nature of the mid-range. Transient performance was impressive, with notes starting and stopping with no skidding or smearing. The sense of accuracy was striking. Cocky's string plucks fell over themselves to be heard. You could hear Cocky's fingers flying across the instrument with notes spilling here and there. Many speakers would have issues keeping up, to be frank, producing a smearing, muddy effect as the presentation averaged out the notes in tones only. The head-own Mark I did no such thing because it was able to keep pace with the music. Hence, the notes were offered in a much more precise manner with a sense of focus, thus giving the music a sense of bounce while staying faithful to the arrangement. While the space tracked the decay of each note, adding to the tonal realism. So let's switch the music, shall we? And I wanted to try something more dynamic. So I decided to listen to a slice of prog metal, the band Caligula's Horse and their new album on vinyl this time, Rise Radiant. Here though, there was no sense of deep bass or any form of solid foundation of lower frequencies. As a contrast, I used a pair of Spendor A1 speakers. These are a similar price, but they're less than half the size, and they produced far more bass and a greater tonal balance than the Hedon Mark 1s. Bass on the Hedon speakers resided firmly in the upper section of that frequency, with no deep grunt on offer at all. Percussion was firm, accurate once more, with a fast-moving and wholly impressive agility. On this high dynamic, high energy piece, lead guitar was slightly illuminated in the mids, moving towards the clinical, although it never reached an uncomfortable stage. The space and air around the percussion did mean that it never encroached upon the lead guitar or vocals, which helped the track as a whole to maintain a fair old pace. The music never dragged, and what bass there was never bloomed. The overall presentation was rich in detail, and instrumental separation was impressive. For example, even at its most chaotic and busy, you could still hear the cymbals being fully explored and its own decay falling steadily across the soundstage, which was effective indeed. Nevertheless, as a rock experience, the playback left a lot to be desired. 
So I moved back to CD and jazz this time with an album by the Dave Brubeck Quartet called The Singles Collection 1956 to 1962 from the Jasmine label and the single version of the hit instrumental Take 5. The introductory cymbal effect was just a delight here, open spacious full of filigree and delicacy with the sax and piano moving around the percussion. Here the music was open and free to roam. What also impressed was this sense of imagery from the head-owned speakers. The drums were obviously sighted behind the sax. The relative positioning was notable and obvious. These speakers are excellent in imagery terms. How one instrument sits relative to the rest, even how one note emerges relative to the rest. The head-owns provide you with a sonic map of what goes where and why. Give these speakers the right source the right kind of music and they will interpret it with style and grace. Which is why these speakers are specialists in their field. The Hedo Mark 1s are not for everyone, they're specialists and they're there to serve a niche and that niche is music that demands accuracy. So I'm talking about music like classical, I'm talking about jazz, I'm talking about acoustic guitar, I'm talking about vocals with a good level of diction and harmony vocals as well. All of these sonic fruits demand a sense of accuracy and these speakers will excel in that area. With music like this, the Hedon Mark I speakers are nimble and accurate enough to keep pace with even the most complex and intricate of arrangements, while infusing the same with emotion. With such music, these speakers can keep pace and track the sort of detail that many other designs fail to even notice, never mind translate to the ear. If you're into classical, jazz, analog presentations using acoustic instruments and voice, then give these speakers a careful demo. Fans of these forms of music genres will find the EcoBox speakers a delight. And it makes you wonder whether there should be more specialist hi-fi items out there. Cars do it after all. We have little city runabouts which major on fuel consumption. If you want to shift heavy stuff around, you get yourself a transit van or a small truck. If you want to pack lots of people into your car, you grab yourself a people mover of some sort and so on. So I'd like to know from you, do you think there should be more specialization in hi-fi? Hi-fi that targets particular genres of music. There may be some out there already, maybe you can list your favourites, but I wondered if there should be more, if we're being rather too general. Do you think hi-fi companies are just chasing the dollar, trying to grab as much money as possible by being as general as possible and trying to appeal to as many people as possible? Do you think there should be more choice in terms of targeted hi-fi? Let me know in the comments, as I say. And that's me done. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video. And thank you for your support of this channel. It is very much appreciated. I couldn't do this without you folks. So thank you again. Hopefully you can join me in the next video, which will be out on Tuesday. Until then, bye bye for now.